Hello and welcome each and all to the Lady Boss Show. I am Denise Smith and it brings me great pleasure to be your host. And I'm so glad you tuned in to the Lady Boss TV channel one. We have a very special guest today. It's the Honorable MPP Mitzi Hunter, former Minister of Education and a powerhouse when it comes to women in politics. She is in the studio with us. So, let me just tell you, we have a whole lot of goodness in store for you today. So ladies, and the men who love us, sit back, grab your cup of coffee, and spend a little time with me. And when we come back, MPP Mitzi Hunter will be joining us. Welcome back to the Lady Boss Show. We are here with Mitzi Hunter, the MPP for Scarborough Gilwood. She recently served as a Minister of Advanced Education and Skills Development. And prior to this post, she served as the Minister of Education and the Associate Minister of Finance responsible for pension reform. Now, Mitzi really does understand our community and the power of working together as a lifelong city builder. She's passionate, and I know this, about unlocking the city's potential by ensuring fair and inclusive access to employment and prosperity. She grew up in Scarborough, graduated from the University of Toronto Scarborough campus with a BA and, and, and completed her MBA at the Rothman School of Management. She continues to bring people together to solve problems while creating jobs and opportunities in our community. I am so glad that MPP Mitzi Hunter is joining us today. Welcome, Mitzi. Thank you for having me, Janice. It's a thrill for me to be here well, as well. It's a thrill to have you here. And I, you know, looking at just the bio and just seeing all what you're doing, it's just amazing. And I know you do it because you absolutely you love, you love what you do. But for those many people that don't know, how did you decide to come into politics? What was your reasoning behind it, especially with the background that you have? Well, Janice, you know, it all started when I was very young. I always um, was involved in my community and uh, I would call myself a, a community builder. So mm -hmm. whether even at university, I was involved in clubs and trying to make a difference in some way. So when I started my professional career, it was natural for me to be a volunteer to be at the table to try to make a difference in, in different ways. And, uh, and so by the time I was asked to run, I said yes. It wow. was something that was instinctive. I felt it was part of my purpose and mm. um, and reason why I'm here is to, to really help my community. So it was especially, timed perfectly. It was timed perfectly, yeah. especially for Scarborough, where you know I'd grown up in Scarborough, went to high school. It was a place that I had learned uh, and 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 worked it's and lived. Home. It's absolutely, home, absolutely, know? it's yeah. home. And I want to make that home better. Mm -hmm. I want to see improvements to things like public transit, mm -hmm. uh, to employment for young. people people mm -hmm. and giving them opportunities to care for our seniors who really built our province and our country. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so th that's why I, I decided to put my name in, in when I was asked in 2013 mm -hmm. and to run in a by-election. Yes. It was also a, a pretty special moment in Ontario. We had just um, had the first woman become the premier of the province yes. in the history of Ontario. Yeah. And so that opportunity to work for a strong female leader yeah. was also compelling. And it's funny because I think it's also as very special moment even now in this time where more and more women are entering into the field of politics. It seems to be that movement where women are wanting to take more of a leadership role. Did you find that to be the trend that more and more women are trying to enter into the arena of politics? Well, we see overall that there are more women who are in the legislature than ever before, mm -hmm. and that's a really good sign. I think where there is concern is is women at the top, women mm. in the leadership role as mm -hmm. premier or in, in, in at the head of an organization. You know, we're not seeing that uh, consistent movement yet, and there's more work to be done in that regard. But of course, first we have to work on getting more women mm -hmm. elected. So mm -hmm. more women need to put them, themselves forward for public office. 
Yes. Now, what do you suppose that is in terms of the leadership that we're not seeing it, you know, you know, take off as quickly as perhaps it should? Is it still that it's still, you know, that kind of double standard or is it that, you know, we are still, you know, just like you said, just getting used to just putting our hat in to start with. And so it will take time. Like, what's your thoughts in that? I, I think it's going to take time to to change the culture mm -hmm. and to to shift that culture. And, and when we think of who is a leader, um, is it sort of a male figure yes. that we think of or do we think of the lady boss? Yes. And, you know, even just what you're doing yeah. here today, I think that's making a difference. Wow. You're bringing forward strong female voices, women in leadership roles, and giving all of us a chance to really tell our story, which might inspire someone watching. And that's why I'm doing this show, because I think that, of course, women, we, you know, we got stories to tell, and we're on the move, and we're doing such great things. And, you know, yes, you're right in that it's still, you know, it's still baby steps. We're still at the beginning stages. But I think the more people that see you in the leadership role, because, I mean, MPP Hunter, you you became, as you said, into the politics when there wasn't a lot of women in there. Yes, mm -hmm. we had Premier Wynne, but we still didn't have that representation. Mm -hmm. So for you to take that step was a big, bold step that you took as well. Well, I mean, at the time I was the CEO of Civic Action, and, and that was, at the time, was my dream job. Mm -hmm. You know, really helping to shape our, our region and making sure that there was a strong voice that brought government and business and community together mm -hmm. at the same table to make change. Mm -hmm. But when I entered, you know, I, I had the privilege of uh, standing on the shoulders of some great women mm -hmm. leaders, you know, people like Marianne Chambers, Chambers yes. and Margaret Best, who had run in the same Scarborough East riding yes. and held that riding. Yeah. So so I had that opportunity, but I still had to go to every door and to introduce myself and to really make the case for why they should elect me. Mm -hmm. What I found was that I loved talking and connecting yeah. with people. Yeah. It was very natural yeah. for me. I, yeah, and I see you in community. I see it's a yeah. very natural thing because when you love people it's n it's it's not work yeah you know and when you have a passion to make a difference in your community it's not work yeah. and so that's what I see when you're out there and you know I, I know that there are like women you know that are up and coming um, in, especially into the political world what would you say would be the first step of somebody you know a, a, a re recent graduate or or high school student that's thinking about becoming a politician becoming an MPP or premier, what is some of the first steps that you would tell them to take? You know, and, and we're in the midst of this right now as, as liberals across Ontario rebuilding our party. So mm. we're looking for those young dynamic. and dynamic and, and, and energetic people who want to, to join the party, who believe in progressive values, who want to make that difference. So, so get involved. Get involved in your local associations with your local members, mm -hmm. uh, with the clubs on campuses mm -hmm. uh, if, okay. if there is yes. one, or create one if there yes. isn't. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and so there's 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 no end of, yeah. of opportunity for people to become so create involved. your own lane then create your, your own, own lane. lane I like that and and also um, you know find those mentors I yes. know for me when I was coming up there was people like you know Alvin Curling mm -hmm. Dr Alvin Curling always invited me to the table mm -hmm. even uh, when I was young and and starting my career he said you have so much to yeah. offer yeah. we need to and hear from still you very much in and connected and involved in the community today. Yes. So this is great. I want to come back mm -hmm. and talk about what you're doing now. I know that you have a lot of programs and initiatives that you're starting that will help women and, and our community, as you said, seniors. So when we come back, I want to just kind of give the floor to you so you could tell us all about what you're doing and ways that we can perhaps, you know, help with some of those initiatives. Thank you. So don't go anywhere because I'm coming back with the MPP, Mitzi Hunter, Let's go fill up our coffee mug and come on back on the other side. And we are back and beside me is the Honorable MPP Mitzi Hunter. And I gotta tell you, I'm really enjoying my time with MPP Hunter. I know you have a busy schedule, so I'm always happy when you could take the time to come and talk to these lady bosses and of course the men that are with them and watching us, I think it's so important for you to come in and, and, and have a conversation. And where we left off, I know you were gonna talk a little bit about what's on your plate right now. What are you doing uh, for the community and some of the initiatives that you're doing? First of all, it's 
always great time to a great time to spend time with you, Janice. Oh, it's please, like it's you always it. it always is. And um, you mustn't do those things to me. <laughs> you know, I, I just I really admire what you do and oh, your passion you. because it, it oh. just really comes across. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, and and right now I am really focused on my role. We are in opposition. Mm -hmm. I'm the critic for finance and treasury, as well as uh, a few other portfolios, including including government and consumer services, wow. culture, tourism, and sports. So it's it's a really uh, a lot to, a to, to keep track mm -hmm. of but at the same time it's about fighting for the things that really matter mm -hmm. to people um, you know things that that make their lives better like mm -hmm. increasing and boosting the minimum wage mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. was something that should have come into effect mm -hmm. on January 1st 2019 we know that this government you know stop that but that's affecting a lot of people's lives in my mm -hmm. community in Scarborough so I'm gonna continue to push for that to advocate for that um, so when you say push, which is great I push for that you think at uh, in the next bill that it's something that if, if people push loud enough and stand you know beside an issue like that that it will eventually it will happen uh, well it could be it could be in a bill but it also could be giving voice to those advocates and, and mm. people in the community to say this is something we need mm -hmm. we want to make sure that when people work they get a fair wage for that hard work mm -hmm. that they're putting in so they can have money to feed yeah. their families and put and clothes on their backs and you're out there in the community a lot so is that something that you find that they're saying a lot that you know that this is really affected me and my you know like before we were able to do this and now because of this you find that there's a big cry outcry for well we see that like we know that in Scarborough for instance food bank use is up mm. it's up by 87 percent wow, right so that. that's a, a big challenge is that people need that 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 cash flow they mm -hmm. need to you know when they work in a minimum wage job they want to have enough money to feed their families and mm -hmm. have that dignity that comes through work mm -hmm. literacy is also another uh, area that I'm working on locally in my community oh, nice. yes. to boost the reading levels of, of children and and even adults that goes who, with your who portfolio not, yes, minister, yes. As the former Minister yes. of Education and, yeah. and Minister of Advanced Education yes. responsible for training colleges mm -hmm. and universities mm -hmm. in this province. It is a, something I'm very passionate about. Uh, equity and inclusive education was something that I, I worked on when I was Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. And you know, m many groups of students are not graduating at the same rate. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we provide supports in communities that are needed so that young people have the best chance at life and we know the power and the importance of, of education. education in that. Yeah. Yes, and I know that that was one of the things that, you know, growing up that your parents always instilled in you to have, you know, get that education. So yeah. now what you're doing is you're delivering that message that your parents gave you to making a difference with some of the initiatives that you're doing. In, in my family, it was a constant. You know, we're, we're in this country because we emigrated here from Jamaica. Hey. When I was a, a young girl, I was, you know, four, four about four years old. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that you know, opportunity was always there and it's still here, mm -hmm. right in Ontario. 120,000 people come to Ontario each and every year for mm -hmm. that dream of, you know, making a better life for themselves yeah. and their family, yeah. just like my family mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. in the 1970s. Yeah. And I know our parents, you know, they came here so that we would make a better life for ourselves. And then when we had kids, they would have a better life, you know, living that, as we would say, the Canadian dream and, you know, so that their sacrifices, because, you know, our parents, they sacrifice so that we could then come and be you know better or have better and then be able to carry on the legacy or the family so mm -hmm. i think that what you're doing with some of those initiatives is really you know helping mm -hmm. to instilled some of the some of the I guess the values that were put in absolutely. us absolutely and you know to encourage the present government to not undo everything that the Liberals did like mm -hmm. one of the programs we brought in was uh, tuition uh, for OSAP free tuition for families earning I was uh, gonna ask about that yes. because you mentioned about like you know that you know about the education have you seen now a decline in people enrolling because of that program is no longer there? Or? Well, the program is, is actually still there. Okay. So it was assessed and, and, uh. and, and looked at. Um, Did we, they tweak it a little bit though, or it's still basically the same uh, it, special? It's, it's still there. Okay. We, we want to monitor and make sure that the access is still there for families, particularly on low and middle income families, mm -hmm. because we know that they are the ones that are struggling with tuition. Mm -hmm. We know students are struggling with high uh, debt loads when they graduate. Mm -hmm. so so the free tuition program was really meant to help families and to help students mm -hmm. to access those programs. We also know that that helps our economy mm -hmm. because when people have the right skills, they will get the right jobs, they'll create jobs, mm -hmm. and, and our province will be better off. Mm -hmm. Well, I know too that 
our economy is based on lady bosses and and people really starting their own business. When you think about Walmart and, and all those things, they really started from an entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. that you know now is a corporation. So I think what you're doing is so needed, especially to keep our economy going. Absolutely. Yeah. We, now, we, we have a, a strong and thriving economy in Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, just recently, uh, the financial and accountability officer provided an assessment. And over the last four years, we've actually had some of the highest growths wow. in Ontario's economy. We created some of the most jobs in the you know last decade. Yeah. And so that was under a lady boss premier, wow. right? So, so that leadership and that investment in skills and in new technologies and That's innovation incredible. has helped to create uh, a you, stronger you economy You know what I'm Ontario. thinking as you're telling me this, and I'm, you know, I want to know where people can get that information because a lot of times people don't know yeah. what you just said. Yeah. Like, you, you know, like, is they, like on your website and, you know, things like that, is that where they can keep connected? Because when they hear misconceptions, mm -hmm. You know, after a while, they begin to think it's reality. Mm -hmm. But hearing what you're saying about the economy in the last mm -hmm. four years mm -hmm. and what, you know, the past government has done, yeah. you know, that information has to keep coming out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Well, so, well, they can certainly go on to my website. Mm -hmm. uh, we post news, news releases right. there. Um, just. You know, they can just search uh, Mitzi Hunter and uh, and find my website. Uh, they can also search the Financial Accountability Office's yes. uh, sure. website as well. They post all their reports there. I, I want to talk about a, a really something that's really important to okay. my local community, mm -hmm. and and it's it's really the young people and uh, and community leaders that came forward to me and said we need to do something about gun violence. Mm. Uh, this is an issue that's plaguing our society and uh, causing people to live in fear. Mm. Some, I, I spoke to a group of young people from one of our high schools and they said you know I'm afraid to walk the streets I'm oh. afraid to take the bus yeah. because of gang violence mm -hmm. and, and and the threat of gun violence so I put forward a private members bill to ban the sale of ammunition for municipalities yeah. now the bill didn't pass but it has driven a conversation about what it's more started. we can do mm -hmm. to make our community safe. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that right mm -hmm. to live free mm -hmm. of, of gun violence in, mm -hmm. and fear in our community. Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, an issue of public health, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. when we think about that. So that's something that I'm going to continue to pursue yeah. and to, to find ways of making our community safer. Now, I, I, I wonder, I know that my time is crunching. I could go all day with you, but you mentioned that the bill didn't pass. Is there something that, you know, that we could do collectively, or is, that, is there like a petition or, yes. you know, because the concern is still there. As you say, young people are coming up to you and saying they don't feel safe. Yes. Is there something that can be done, uh, you know, to move this um, Abs along. Absolutely. I would encourage people to go online, go onto my website. They can sign the petition. So they can, there is a petition. There then. is a petition okay. online. They can drop by my office. They can sign a physical peti petition that I can read out in the legislature. Uh, write to me. That information is very helpful if this issue touches you or any of the issues I've talked about. And uh, and that helps as we you know, continue to raise our voices on behalf of, of the people who believe in progressive values in Ontario. Wow. So because I want to make sure they know where the website is in closing, maybe you could just let them know where is that website mm -hmm. that they can go to mm -hmm. and find out all that great information where they can sign the petition. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have events of what's coming up because you do so much in community. I know mm -hmm. there's an upcoming event uh, in January and February yeah. and so on. So. Where can they go to get I mean, information? Sure, um, they can just visit uh, my my website, and it's uh, mhunter.mpp. Perfect. Uh, at at liberal, I believe is the is the URL. They and can we'll also probably, you will probably have it. Uh, we'll have on it the screen mm -hmm. that you can also uh, follow me on Twitter oh. at Mitzi Hunter. Okay, and uh, and that's how you get sort of real time uh, information that's posted. I love that. My New Year's levy it will be on January thirteenth, twenty nineteen, nice. at the. East Scarborough Boys and Girls Club, Very nice. 100 Galloway Road. Uh, I should be there. I should be there in community, capturing all those it great moments. It wouldn't be the same without you, uh, so I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming. Yes. I want to once again thank MPP Hunter for coming and sharing all what's happening in her world. Thank you. And please uh, stay connected. As you can see, uh, the, the uh, website down there where you can find out more about what's going on with MPP Hunter in, in the next year that's up and coming. So thank you once again, and thank you so much for joining us. I hope you tune in again next time.